Do you have a desire to build wealth? Of course you do. What if I told you that the old saying you can't beat the market is complete BS? I don't just show you where, but how to be a contrarian investor and hit your investing goals out of the park. So I truly believe that this is the one and only type of company that you should invest in when it comes to the junior mining space if you want to have a higher chance of being profitable. This is not financial advice, yada, 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 legal disclaimers, cover your butt kind of disclaimers. Let's drive, dive right into it. So what I'm going to show you today is a company that, first of all, I am very biased towards, like extremely biased, and you're going to understand why very quickly. I basically sit on the board of a company that has optioned the main project, the flagship project for this company. But the reason why I'm going to talk about this, and you can understand this through a lens of pure bias, is the reason why I accepted to join this company is the same reason why you should take a look at this specific type of company and ignoring it and trying to navigate the junior mining sector at the same time is probably the worst thing you can do. So let's take a look at this pure awesomeness baby right here. There's Rush Rare Metals Corp. This is the company that I sit on the board of. Uh, it is absolutely flying today. Don't chase it or do, I don't know. I'm not telling you what to do with your own money, but here's the thing. Now let's bring the microphone close to me because this is, this is way too far. The deal here is that Myriad Uranium is drilling our piece of land right now. And when I say our, uh, it's really a, a matter of a nice little deal that we did with them. At the time, it was right before Uranium took off and we didn't think that we were the best company to, you know, be able to raise the money and figure out what to do with the project, but we knew that it had a lot of value. And so we optioned it out to Myriad Uranium. And Myriad is now doing really well at 56 cents, but I think it has a very long way to run. Now, I've been speaking about this company. I've, I've been promoting it since September of 2022. This is, where is it? September 2022. So it started in the low 20s here. Um, if you were to listen to me, you could have, uh, you know, got gotten a, a double bag here, another one here, and then a bit more than that here and likely beyond because this is just the beginning of their drilling campaign. So why was this so obvious to me that I was willing to sign on with Rush and almost have this this kind of certainty that this was going to go somewhere. Well, back then you didn't really know that Myriad was going to end up with, you know, our project, but since then, okay, since the end of 2023, it's been pretty clear that they were going to take care of a project that had a lot of upward potential. Let's put it this way. So the reason why this to me is extremely obvious is because the whole way through the company was being promoted and I've been screaming on the rooftops and I've been talking about both Myriad and Rush for a very long time. Other people have as well. And this has accumulated to the point where now that they are drilling enough people know about it and have heard about it, that anything positive that happens with the company, it explodes. It seems like the recent promotion is what's doing it. It's not, it's the accumulation of, you know, the promotional work and, and just the exposure that the company um, has gotten throughout the years. Why do I think that this type of company is too obvious and why you should take a look at it in any commodity that you invest in? Well, first of all, let's define the type of company we're talking about here. We are talking about companies that are in a commodity whereby the, the market for that commodity isn't hot yet when the deal is done. 
which is true. Uh, and we got Copper Mountain for not a ton of money. You know, Myriad Uranium had to to pay up a bit more than than we did, quite a bit more. But when we got the deal done, I think it was 2022, you know, it, it was an okay deal. Because Uranium was in a downturn. But we knew that long term, it was going to pick back up. And so we had the vision that uranium as a commodity, as the thing that would push the project's worth up or down, was in a loco, in a temporary low. But our view was that it was going to pick back up because of the fundamental thesis of uranium, which is pretty much the only thing I talk about in this channel. Fine. That's good. That's assuming that all uranium companies are going to go, you know, haywire eventually. Not true because then the second point is, okay, why this project? Why does it make sense for you to get into this project? Jurisdiction. That's one massive thing. We saw the writings on the wall of a trend that was very US centric. Trends I would like to propose to you are always a little bit longer than you imagine. And so if you think country A is getting better and you see that it's been getting better for like 12 months, you're probably still very early in the whole trend. Trends with countries, commodities, legislation, culture, et cetera, they take years to form. And so as long as you get in, in the first third or so of that trend, you're going to do really well. So we saw a trend of US-centric projects coming together, getting advanced. You have Encore Energy, which is, I think, the only... Am I, am I right in saying that Encore Energy is the only producer of the cycle so far? That's insane. I have happy memories about that, like 15 bagger or something. And then, okay, so you have uranium, soft, but going up hopefully, then you have the jurisdiction. Great. But then you have the third ingredient, which is the most important in my opinion. And the number one reason why I make investment decisions very, very quickly without much due diligence, I don't recommend this, but this is what I do. And I need to be honest with you. When I see that there's a project with resources in the ground that aren't compliant, that they need to drill to figure out how much they have, not if they have something, it's an instant yes, virtually. There are a few things that can really make a deal go bad. For example, there are certain people that if I can recognize them being part of the company, they're in my blacklist. So I say no immediately, but this wasn't the case here. And I know the management team and and, uh, and some of the people behind this. And so we looked at these three ingredients with the third one, I think, being one of the most important ones. I can't stress this enough. If you believe that a commodity is going to come back into vogue, take a look at silver, take a look at uh, gold, take a look at wink, wink, nudge, nudge, platinum right now. Then you're not only depending on the risk of discovery, the risk of exploration. There's a massive risk in only going heavy on explorers. And I always say, don't bet the house on anything, but especially leave a small portion of your portfolio to the explorers. If you want to go to the Athabasca Basin, by all means, take a look at Stallion Uranium, take a look at Sky Harbor Uranium. We've had these guys on the show, I don't know how many times. They're great. And you're not going to miss out if they hit something really big, but understand the proportion behind what you're you know, setting up here as your portfolio. When I see that there is uranium in the ground, then it becomes a very complicated question of, are these pounds that they will 100% find because they're there, because this used to be a mine? <laughs> are they economic or not? And the question whether they're economic or not is a question that is only figured out years after the fact. So if you want, you can basically have your whole portfolio around this theme of companies with known resources in decent trending jurisdictions with decent management teams 
that don't dilute to heaven, that don't sell stock to heaven like there's no tomorrow and don't report it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then it's a matter of if and not when. I have others that I'm going to be talking about from now until the end of the year. There are other companies that have this set up. And I think they're going to be completely explosive because when uranium comes back and uranium is coming back now, it's becoming hotter with, you know, AI data centers and all that. Then all of a sudden people are looking for investments to buy. Companies like this that are tiny start saying, hey, this is what we're finding. And we're about to find a whole lot more because we know there are pounds in the ground here. Are they economic? We don't know. They're very clear about that. But because that question takes a long time to be figured out, that's where you make your money. That's the meat of the move. It's can we make this economic? And then it's a metallurgical process. It's, it's an engineering question. It's a lot of different things that really depend on when production is coming online to define whether it's economic or not. I don't know. They don't know yet. It's way too early in the process. But as it uh, forms, as the, 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 the body of knowledge forms around these deposits, because this is definitely more than one, then there's a massive opportunity. And by gosh, look at the USA. Look at all these tiny little companies with small-ish projects that I've been you know, <laughs> I've been pounding the table and saying there needs to be m and action here. I don't know that there will be. I don't know if this is going to be sexy enough for, you know, a producer to come in and buy or for, you know, smaller companies to to come together and, and start producing, you know, who knows? What if ISO uh, wants to buy these guys out? What if Encore wants to buy these guys out? What if, you know, you are energy UEC? I mean, now you're starting to see names, you know, in the region and, and you see movement there. You see M&A, you see, you know, production and that's exciting. So that is a tidbit of how I personally invest. And most of the time when I've done that, I've made money. Maybe you will too. Maybe you'll lose some. I don't know. I can't guarantee this for you. But when it's a matter of when and not if, it's usually a really great bet. And one more thing, please don't forget that what makes your portfolio better in the long run is not the potential of any one company. It's really the probability that a positive outcome will happen. Just sit with that for a second. All these companies have massive potential. In fact, I would dare say that explorers have a bigger potential if we're going for completely greenfield exploration. The potential, the possibility is bigger than something like this, but the probability is much smaller. With this, I would exchange possibility for probability any day of the week. It's almost a certainty if you have the right setup that companies like this do go up in price. And that's how money is made, in my opinion. So think about that. Don't buy Myriad. Don't buy Rush. Do your own thing. Do your own due diligence and start to figure out your own process for fighting and figuring out what to do with your portfolio, how to profit from what has now become a really exciting market for uranium investors. All right. If you want to know what my next play is regarding this thesis of not if, but how much uh, they have in the ground, then I would want you to take a look at this video over here. I'll see you in the next one.